Welcome to our show, evening show. Last year, when I came to Kanjalo, we listened to was Kuluman Jenge's Catology. We are speaking about the cast Eschatology, but this time we changed the name Eschatology. We are saying Apocalyptic. <laughs> it's almost the same name as Kuluman Jenge's Kato. They into Zoltina, but this time we give in a special meaning. We say Apocalyptic for horsemen. We are born and we are not okay. So with the apocalyptic, today you are going to hear and the same thing that we've been talking for two weeks and since I've been a sick niggas August and I'm trying to get. We are featuring Obaba we to Baba Upishopu Espim Somi. We are showing a few years ago. We are showing and we Kairos conference when he was telling us about the four horsemen. I'm telling you, there are things that you're going to hear and understand. Police is cut. We are here for you. I'm not alone today. You know, I'm with my lovely spokesperson and Asami, my queen, the queen of the palace, my gorgeous babe. I'm telling you, my 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 ding dong. So it's really like a magic change like a love and adventure. Yeah, boy, yes, I'm in love with my ding dong. Oh my ding dong, oh my populizat. So so she need. So actually, so how are you? My visa is not coming. Anyway, I'm not coming. I'm in ghetto. So so you're currently in the right line corner as a Sherlock Hotel, which is season later. More explanation of the end times apocalypse. Last of the season, we're going to Baba Way to a Bishop Ekuluma. Eh, yeah. Yes, you are going to be blessed again. And as his own cousin, I'm going to get in a so I'm going to allow Dr. Tabisila all the way to show me as cousin. What is going to happen? Because lazy in so was born in good. There are so many people who are afraid of so many things. Some of the things are useless. I'm sorry to use that word, but they are nonsense. I'm sorry to use that one for today. Okay, they are foolishness. I'm sorry to use that one. Don't say this is silly. I was so sorry. Got to say this is silly. Don't say come back up. We are showing peace. I want to put this to a tip. So that, that, that's what is happening right now. The world is in chaos. Mm. And uh, recently, and Abantu with the Kulumo, we weekend, Yom Saga 24, is Sunday, I'm going to be betting so things total. People were crying and waiting, and voice notes were everywhere. But in Jumailan Jengale, they don't share it. Zihambe Yonkinda, Uguzabantu Bangabina Kuwesab, there is coronavirus and there is a pandemic, that pandemic, you are born at young age, but let me allow my queen to explain to you what you get in a sweet tolan and clutch. And this is a Kubega lesson, the longer we are going to give it to you. And the claim to go, go to your mobile, you are not traveling a lot, use your data profitably. And I'm telling you, you are going to get enough information. I'm telling you, you're going to be blessed. We love you so much, that's why we are doing this for you. Amen. Just for a background, uh, Bishop Espin Somi was with Kulma about the four horsemen. So we're just going to read it so that you have an idea as we go forward. La Payago Revelation chapter 6 from verse um, 1. Uti, I watched the lamb opening the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures saying in a voice like thunder, Come. I looked and before, and there before me was a white horse. It, it, its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror, bent on, bent on conquest. When the lamp opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come. Then another horse came out, a very red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. Then the lamb opened the third seal. I heard the third living creature saying, Come. I looked, and there, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scale in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four creatures saying, A quarter of wheat for a day's wages and three quarters of baal for a day's wages 
and do not damage the oil in the wine. When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. I looked and there, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over fourth of the earth to kill by the sword, famine, plague, and by the wild beast of the earth. When he opened the fifth sources of Trinalanag on the fourth seal where we see these four horsemen which are called the apocalypse. So Bishop 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 Espim Somi will explain more so that we understand the symbolism of what they mean. But on this session he is going to give us an introduction where he tells us Uguti, what is being said in the word is said to those people who are living in the time and also all the other people that follows uh, after and also he speaks a little bit about how the church was contaminated from the beginning where we know it talks about adam and eve and i believe that you will be blessed amen you'll understand a little bit of history about constantinople when the church and states come together mm. but it's just an introduction mm. don't miss this amen god bless you bless you let us pray dear heavenly father I come before you humbly to pray and ask for your grace and mercy, to ask for your guidance and your hand in all the things that we're going to do and say. We allow you to take the free reign. We allow you, Lord Jesus Christ, to be the king of the conference. I ask it because you allowed me to know your name. Therefore, I say thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's take Africa to divine heights. In wisdom. Mighty God, I... Where is my apostle? Oh, I was just going to greet your, 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 your seat there. Uh, thank you very much. Um, this is my son. Eh? My son. In whom I am well pleased. Like the father said to Jesus, I say to him, trots up. I'm very proud of him, right? Okay. Hey, umam postoligas. Makoti waguam. Thank you. I'm very proud and I'm also very proud of the house here yeah, Mount Zion uh, thank you very much give yourself a round of applause and I also would like to say thank you to my wife Zine Mavis Rebecca Msomi Niamas, you... there she is. Nangia. Sweet and lovely. Muse, we are tande. Okay, um, this, this, this is the Kairos moment. Lo umzuzu weskat. And it's not only going to start and end today. Aizo kalanje. But for God, if we say this is a Kairos day, to him it's a thousand years. So if we say this is a Kairos moment, we don't simply mean maybe one hour. It's a moment from the Alpha until the Omega. 
When we talk about the Kairos moment, we speak of God renting the heavens and coming down to our time. Now we, he is here. Manje Ula. And I have asked him for the grace of teaching today. Okay, right. We are going to talk about the four horsemen. Uh, these four horsemen are actually one horseman. Yeah, they, they, according to what is written, there are four of them. But actually, it's only one. He changes colors. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? We, we will be talking about one man. He simply ch changes the colors. In other words, he works differently at different times. Okay. Before we go into, into, into the teaching, I'd like to explain to those that have been to school and uh, they belong to different schools of thought. There are those people who believe that the book of Revelation was written before 70 AD. So in other words, it was only written for the Jews in Jerusalem. And there are those that believe that the book was written somewhere in, in 96 AD before John was killed. Whatever school of thought you are, Jesus is coming back. Whenever the book was written, but when he comes back, he's not going to ask you which day was the book written. He's going to ask you, did you realign yourself with my word? So in other words, I'm not interested in dates. I am more interested in your state of faith. Today I'm not going to talk about the horses. I'm simply going to give you a narrative the history of the man sitting on the horses. That is only for today. Now if you believe that the book was written before 70 AD. Or if you believe that the book was written after 70 AD. I, I want you to open Mark chapter 13 and verse 37. Mark chapter 13 and verse 37. Mark chapter 13. God taught me something very profound. It's the last verse of the book of, of, of chapter 13. It reads like this. Have you opened? The book of Mark is in the New Testament. Okay. Can I read now? It reads like this. And what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. What, 
What I say unto you, I say unto all. What I'm going to say now, I'm not only saying it to you, I'm saying to those who believe that the book was written before 70 AD. I'm also saying it to those people who believe that the book was written in 96 AD. Because what I I say unto you I say unto all when God or Jesus speaks he speaks into eternity sometimes he speaks to you actually speaking to all those people that are on in your loins sometimes he speaks to David he says, David, your son will build me a temple. But actually, he's not only speaking to David. He's not talking about Solomon only. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Who is going to build the spiritual temple. Are you coming with me? So sometimes you must listen to God carefully. So what he's going to say now is not for, for you only. But it's for those people that will hear you preach after this. Okay, let's come back. He says well, I was praying. He said to me, I am not going to write another Bible. This Bible is enough. Most of the things that were written here were written for those people that were alive at that time. But whatever I said to them, I was saying to all. If I say to Moses, thou shalt not commit adultery, he was not only saying to Moses, he was saying to the generation of Jesus Christ, he was also saying to this generation, he was also saying to the generation that is still coming. So what I say unto you, I say unto all, if you can get that principle you will understand the Bible because whatever he says in the Bible it applies to any human being that is on the earth do you understand that so in other words I'm going to read about these horses he was telling the seven churches that were at that time in, in Turkey. But while he was telling them, he was also telling us. Amen. Ay, 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 ay. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was actual, there were seven churches in, in Asia Mania, which is Turkey today. He was not only talking to those churches. He was talking to all the churches. Including our church. Okay. I think I've made that clear. Is, is, is that clear? Now let's go to this man. Now we, we read chapter 5. Which tells us about Jesus Christ. I don't want us to make a mistake. And think that the main speaker or the starring of the book of Revelation is the Antichrist. He, he is not the main actor. 
The main actor of the book of Revelation is Jesus Christ. The conqueror of the book of Revelation is Jesus Christ. But simply because I want to tell you what the devil is trying to do. I'm going to speak about this man who is the enemy of Christ. But first First of all, you need to understand this. That in chapter 5, we see Jesus Christ coming out of the throne. He comes out like a lamb which was slaughtered even before the foundations of the earth. He comes out and he stands away from God. And then in the right hand side of God, God is holding a book. This book is closed. Just, just underline that the book is closed. Because in chapter 10, the very same book will be opened. Now we are going, we are seeing Jesus taking the book. Before he takes it, one of the people says in heaven, who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to approach the, the, the throne and take that book in the hand of God? According to John, there was no man in heaven. According to John, there was no man on earth. According to John, there was no man under the earth who was worthy to take that book. Then John started crying because he saw that there is not one person who was ready to take that book. First of all, this book was closed. It was also sealed. It was also sealed. How, how can we put this? I'm, I'm also trying to find. Yes, yes, I understand Upao, but, but there's something I want us to explain. I can't, I can't get it in this Zulu myself. I can't get it. But let, let me explain it to you. In the olden days, a person would write a book, a letter. Then he would fold it like this. And then once he folds it, he would put something like a candle or wax. And then he would take his ring, his mark, and stamp it on the, on the wet wax. This would show that, that the information that is inside is confidential. Only the addressee can open this book. So there was no one Person who was able to open that letter. On top of it all, it was not only one seal. There were seven seals. Now, these seven seals carried a mystery to tell you that Jesus Christ, number one, he is in charge. If Jesus Christ would take this book, it tells you he is in charge of all eternity. So whatever he opens in this book comes out because he wants it to come out. It cannot come out without his permission. Even if I 
if it is the Antichrist, he cannot come out unless Christ allows him to come out. Do you understand that Christ is in charge? The devil is not in charge. Do you understand that? There is absolutely nothing that the devil can do unless God allows it to happen. There can be no earthquake without the permission of God. I just want you to understand as we continue talking about the Antichrist the Antichrist don't think he is in charge. I simply want you to be able to identify the devil. Because it is very dangerous to fight an enemy you don't know. You need to understand your enemy. Thank you. Okay. Where are my verses? And what I say to you, I say unto all. Do me a favor. Once you get to your church, just tell them. Because what I say unto you, I'm saying to your church. They may not be here, but I'm saying it to them. It's, it's Jesus who said that. But I am his ambassador. The ambassador only speaks the words of his, of his, of his capital. Okay, let's go now. Genesis 3, 1-6. Genesis chapter 3. Let's start with, with Genesis chapter 3. Verse 1 to 6. Okay. Before, before we read. When God created the heavens and the earth. It was so beautiful. The Bible says. He said it's good. Yeah? And then he created everything. According to chapter 1, he prepared a dwelling place for men. He made everything very, very good. Eh? When he saw that it was good and Beautiful. Then he created something that he said, it must have my image, it must look like me. Can you tell me how beautiful God is? Apostle T.A. once used a word some 20 years ago. She said, God was sublime. <laughs> God was sublime. Now, now, if God is sublime, <laughs> ask T.A. what sublime means. <laughs> okay, all right. Right? I don't know whether God is beautiful or handsome. But I, I, I am sure my wife is beautiful and I am handsome. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, if God is sublime, then how are you? If you are in his image and likeness, let's start again. If God is sublime and you are made in his image and likeness, how do you look? Hey, they are not sure. Look at me. 
I look just like God. Look at yourself. Just do like this. Like this. This is your mirror. You look just like God. Don't you think you're beautiful? I mean you guys don't you think you are handsome I mean all of you don't you think you are sublime <laughs> okay okay now but but unfortunately there is somebody who was thrown out of heaven his name is the devil. Actually, his name is Satan. The word devil simply means an enemy. When these people, these two, Adam and Eve, they were in perfect peace. Peace. In peace with each other. In peace with God. But there was an enemy somewhere who wanted to destroy this peaceful coexistence. Suddenly in chapter 3, the enemy was found inside the Garden of Eden. I just want I want to explain to you the Garden of Eden is a picture of the kingdom. It's like the, the Garden of Eden is, is just like your church. Where you are and you think everybody, everything is in order, everything is, is peaceful, everything is alright. But somehow, sometime, you find that evil has crept in. There is a principle that I learned. That the, you must always be careful of what happened in the beginning. Because it has a tendency to remake itself all the time. I also want to tell you something. The devil has run out of new ideas. He keeps rehashing all tricks. So now he is found in the Garden of Eden. Once found in the Garden of Eden, he asked questions. Let's, let's go to uh, chapter 3. Chapter 3, is that the one? Now the serpent was more cunning that, than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree in, of the garden? That's the devil asking. Inyoga ya ino buki ilikna zo zongi ilwa neza sende. Abe zenzilu chehovu nkulu nkulu. Yati gowe sifazane. Ngempelu nkulu nkulu shilo yi nuguti ninga limtini ya senti minina. First of all, I just want to show you something. Oko kala kone mfunu kumbi sagona. During this time, the snake had feet. He could walk just like me. Why do I say that? Because when he was cast, he was told that he was going to walk on his stomach. Meaning he was not walking on his stomach. Number two, the snake was able to speak. Otherwise, he would not have been able to communicate with, with Eve. Can you see him? He looks just like a human being. Amen. <laughs> now, do you see what sin can do to your life? 
one word against God changes your structure. Lishincha uguma guako. Obugu munto puzu juala. Obugu munto ji wunga. You understand? Ngabenya konda. Now, the, the, the snake came in. And he said, let's go back to that verse again. He, he, he asked the, the serpent asked Eve, did really God tell you not to eat? Let's move forward. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. She had all the instructions. Okay, let's go on. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. In your gayati, go as fazani, and you go for no go for capungulungulu yaz, with him shiny zilla, guya go for the gamesho en, niben jengon gulungul niguaz, or goose, no goobi. What I can ask, I can ask you today. Never negotiate with the devil. Don't get into a debate with the devil. Because the devil has had more years on earth than you. He knows your psychology. He knows how you think. He simply says you will be like God. You will no good and evil. Let's just go back to, 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 to chapter 1. The Bible says God said let's make men in our own image and likeness. So they already look like God. They were already wise as God. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. But the devil comes and switch and, and, and just twist the, the truth. Because he wants to have a share in what God has. He wants to take whatever God has. He wants to steal. The, Eve was the first church. Uh, Adam was the first pastor. Do you understand that a woman stands for a church? Because the church is the bride. So, Adam was standing for God as a man, as a husband, as Jesus is the husband of the church. So the serpent wanted to beguile the wife of Adam. So this lie, deception has been going on until today. The devil is trying to beguile or to contaminate the wife of Jesus Christ. When Jesus comes back, he will find his church contaminated because the serpent keeps on coming in subtly changing the word of God. The word of God is simple. He says, thou shalt not eat. It does not need interpretation. Don't eat. But the Bible comes with a twist. Do you understand? 
He takes what is simple and makes it difficult so that you take it. By the time your husband comes, you are contaminated. That is why David says, I will hide your word in my heart so that I will not sin against you. If he that refused to, con to, to take a contaminated word, we would have been in a better position than this. On that day, I haven't come to the to, to, to the horses. The horses will talk about them tomorrow. Okay? I'm, I'm simply telling you how he works. Right. Then in chapter 10, I think it's chapter 10, yes. The devil comes. Is it chapter 10? Okay, let me just tell you. Just write it down because I can't read all of this, okay? Is it? Chapter 11, I'm sorry. Verse 1 to 9. That's Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 9. Genesis chapter 11 from verse 1 to 9. Yeah. Before I go there. Now let's we'll talk we'll talk about that when we come to Jesus Christ, right? The people were expanding in the earth, chapter eleven. They were of one language. They were one mind. Then they said, Come. Was an. Let's build a tower to heaven. Asake numpo shongo pege zuluini. Do you see the power of unity? Ngabe ni abona mandu bumba ana. When people can come together as one, benga bumba, munye. they can build a tower going to heaven. Banga kumpo shongo finyelele zuluini. They started building. Bakala baka. They, when, when they were, I, I don't know how far high they were. And then God said in heaven, let us come down. Okay, let's, let's, let's hear us at that one. Right? Men say, let us go up to heaven. God says, let's come down and see what they are doing. If God says, let's go and see what they are doing. It means what they are doing has no been seen by man. Let's go and see what they are doing. It means what they are doing has not been sanctioned in heaven. What they are doing is from their flesh. It's not part of the plan of God. There is no man that can go to the Father except the Son of God will take him to the Father. The Son said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. But these guys are building a tower to heaven. Who's building this tower? Actually, it is the devil. He's telling them, guys, we can go to heaven. Okay, let me just use an example in chapter, in, in the book of, um, I think it's Ezekiel. He says, I will go up. It's the devil talking now. He says, I will go up. 
and sit in the circle of the Lord. I will be high in the mountain of God. And then God says, Because you have said, You will come out. You will come up without my authority. I'm going to grab you and throw you down into a bottomless pit. No one has a right to go to heaven without the authority of God. Do you understand that? Don't ever try to go to heaven with your mind. Let's use this example again. Am I still preaching or teaching? Whatever, okay? No, my God. Do you allow me? Okay, let me just let me just flow the way I want to flow, right? Okay. okay. One day, there is this man chosen by God. His name is Jacob. He's a supplanter. He's a skebengu. You know, yes, he was a skebengu. Why is skebengu? What is a skebengu in English? He stole his brother's birthright. But he was chosen by God. Sometimes we blame Jacob. Most of the time I don't blame him. If I know I am chosen by God, I'll do everything to grab my, my, my blessing. So if you are careless with your blessing, I'll take it, I'll take it. You're not serious simply because you are hungry. You will sell your birthright. I will take it. So Jacob took his birthright because even before they were born, God had already declared. Jacob I have loved Iso I have hated Let me ask you something Do you still blame Jacob? Do you blame him? I would have done the same thing brother If I know I am chosen And you are careless I would take your birthright Now this guy is chosen He runs away Listen to the people who are chosen I can see others are looking at me like this. Let me go back there. I, I think I'm... I, I, okay, all right. He runs to his uh, mother's house. Go Malume. To his uncle's house. Late in the night, he decides to sleep. When he is a fast asleep, he has a dream. He sees a ladder going from the earth straight to heaven. And right at the top, he sees a picture of the Almighty God. He sees angels walking. Down and up. Can you compare the two? Can you compare what they built in Babylon? They built their own tower to heaven. This guy is fast asleep. God reveals to him there is a way to go to heaven. Approved by me. When he woke up, he has what we call revelatory knowledge. He says, indeed, 
God is in this place. He hasn't built anything. But he says God is in this place. He says this is the house of God. Let me just open this one. Eh? He says this is the house of God. There is no house there. He's speaking in the spirit. He says, this is the house. He sees a church that is not built with stones. He sees a church built with spiritual stones. He says, indeed, God is in this place. He calls this place Bethel. Bethel means house of God. Okay. Let's open it again, right? When Jesus was here on the earth, Jesus is Katela M. Saben. Am I following all that? Eh? When Jesus was here on the earth, Gescatu Chesela M. Saben. Peter, I think it's Peter, I'm not sure. He went and called Nathaniel. 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 What Nathaniel? We have seen the guy who is spoken of in the scriptures. We think he's the Christ. Come and see. And then he comes. When he comes to Jesus. And then Jesus says. Hey you Israelite. Eh? You, you, you are an Israelite with no, with no guile in your spirit. You are clean. And then Nathaniel said, How do you know me? He says, Before Peter, if it was Peter, before Peter called you under the tree, I knew you. And then he said, Ah, you must be the Christ. And then he says to him, You believe because I said I saw you under the tree. He says, Stick with me. Because you are going to see angels moving down and up on the son of man. What Jesus was trying to tell us, he was telling us that dream that that that, that Jacob saw some hundreds of years ago. He was actually seeing Jesus Christ as a step ladder. We are here. If you get into Jesus Christ, you can walk up to God. This is the only approved way to get to heaven. Don't build your own way to get to heaven. So while, while God is, is building his own way to heaven, the devil is, is building his own church on the other side. So the church, the church of Jesus Christ must be able to discern which one is God's, which one is the devil's. You're going to hear about that tomorrow. Because the devil is building. And God is building. You should know the architect. Which one are you going to follow? Hey. God has got his apostles. And the devil has got his own false apostles. God has got his prophets. And the devil has thrown them right in the midst of the church. False prophets. Get ready tomorrow. You must bring your, your, your seat belts, eh? Because tomorrow, I'm going to tell you about the false prophet that are in the midst of the church of God.
Hey, as kono go ten bosegi lege la papa bishop ile he is a teacher of the word. He is a mm-hmm. man of God. I have never seen a teacher like him. Olaka is. Namu mbona nkhululi nje nginje umbona ikhululi nje besihlele ngaphansi kwagama lele. Especially as for this is the one going to go. It was interesting the first e logo the introduction. Very interesting. Just to know nje ukuthi yonke into kulunkula ikhulumayo nakuba isiyenzekile but iphinde yenzeke futhi it's like it always repeats like cycles and cycles and cycles and we are when he explains about the four horses says obona ukuthi these things are also happening now has been happening mm. all along yes 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 so let me pray for you father these teaching are not here to make them to be afraid amen father they are here to give them information mm. in order for them to be ready to be prepared yes for such time as this my father god in jesus name we thank you for your servant that has spoken to us father god in jesus name even as we continue my lord we pray for your grace to be amen. to each and every home to each and every believer each to each and every person who listens to these teachings in the mighty name of Jesus we bless you father we thank you for this day as we are going to sleep as it concludes this session we love you lord take your amen. prayer and bless in our hearts in Jesus name amen amen see you tomorrow we are continuing amen see you tomorrow love you so much thank you tell your friends about amen. this show